This episode is brought to you by FX's Feud, Capote vs. the Swans. Inspired by actual events, the series tells the story of Truman Capote and the women he betrayed. The original housewives, they were society's most elite women. Rich, glamorous socialites who defined a bygone era of high society New York. From creator Ryan Murphy, this drama series features an all-star cast, including Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Diane Lane. FX's Feud premieres January 31st on FX Stream on Hulu. This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. Welcome to Central Texas Living, the podcast. I'm Ann Harder, and what a treat it is to introduce you to the new Mrs. Texas, Ashley Beard. She's Mrs. Waco and just very recently was crowned Mrs. Texas. Congratulations. Thank you. This is so much fun. Now, I know you in a different realm. Oh, yes. At Halo, <laughs> at the Halo Gym, mm-hmm. Halo Fitness Center. Athletic what? Center. You can Halo, call it whatever you want. <laughs> Halo Athletic Center. Well, your partner in this little endeavor, Kyle Williams, has been my trainer for a long time. And uh, anyway, when you all opened this recently, and that's how I got to know you better. Mm-hmm. But your husband, as Mrs. Texas, I've known since he was about this high, grew up across the street from where we were living on Austin Avenue. Never knew he'd be Mr. Texas. That's right. Jody Jody is probably, you know, really scratching his head on this one. But uh, he married a gorgeous young lady. So tell me about this whole journey. This wasn't an overnight success. No, it wasn't. So um, I actually never did a pageant in my whole entire life. I played soccer at Baylor. I was a complete jock. Um, Once I got pregnant, I was eating about, oh, probably a half a gallon to a gallon of ice cream sitting there, 60 pounds heavier. And I saw something on TV that just triggered me. Uh, It was about models and different things like that. And they were absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Um, However, how they were portraying them, and of course, it's reality TV. Um, was a different light. And so I am the quirky, tall, funny, goofy kid. And I said, you know what? I still need competition in my life and I'm going to be just that. Um, So after I had my son and my daughter, I entered into Mrs. Texas America. That was the first pageant I ever did. And out of 52 women, I placed second runner up. I had no clue what I was doing. I was was that here it. Uh, in Central Texas? It was in Corsicana. In Corsicana. So Corsicana. every okay. single year, Mrs. Texas is in Corsicana. So oh. I did that. And then um, three times I competed in Texas America, and I got second runner-up every single time. So that was my position. <laughs> so when they called my name this last time, <laughs> I literally think I'm still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to share what I've learned the news mm-hmm. on Facebook. Oh, yes. What your friend... April Schaefer. Mm -hmm. She says, so a thing just happened. (laughs) Ashley Beard was just crowned Mrs. Texas America. She is beautiful, funny, poised, and a freaking beast. (laughs) She can crush a watermelon with her thighs one day and strut across the stage in six-inch heels the next day. So proud to call her her friend. So congratulations. Well, thank you. And she she had wonderful pictures. And, of course, I just had to share her post. I was so excited for you because I knew you had been working toward this. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about what all is involved. Uh, I guess we talked maybe a week or so ago, and you were a little stressed because your evening gown. Yes. How did that turn out? It never did. But I'm going to tell you something, Anne. Every single time I've competed, my evening gown has never come in. The first, what? Year, yep, the first year I competed, uh, the gown that I originally had designed came in eight inches too short. And as you can probably <laughs> tell from just sitting here, I am six feet tall. And then um, the next time, they couldn't get the gown in the color that I wanted, so they had to get a different one. And the gentleman who was helping me with my dress actually had to, right before prelims, come and deliver earrings to match. Um, and then another time I competed, the gown was never made. And then this time, for whatever reason, especially with COVID, um, I think it got stuck in customs. And so I had to leave the week prior um, to go up at 10 o'clock at night up to Dallas to go pick a gown. And it was the first one that I tried on. It fit like a glove, no alterations, and everything That's happens wonderful. for a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and that happens because you work out all the time. Yeah, Every, <laughs> that is whatever. true. Whatever. The two times a week, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> You're always there, you know, working out. You got your earbuds in and, and 
doing your phone. You are a busy mom. Yes, and I don't. So, so I have I, to work out. I appreciate <laughs> so much you taking some time because, you know, really, this is kind of picking up kid time right now. So you that's, what my, that. that's what Mr. Texas that's is what Mr. <laughs> Texas got to do. Well, tell me about your children. Tell me about your family. So Jet is eight. That's my son. And my daughter is six. They are exactly 20 months apart. And what's ironic about that is they were both born on both born goodness on the 26th. That was my soccer number. And this really? year when I competed, I was number 26. Um, <laughs> but they are my pride and joy. They are absolutely incredible. And I love them to death. And their personality is unfortunately just like mine. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I couldn't get one picture of the family together and cute and uniformed and everyone's smiling. They had to make funny faces the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that personality has to come out. In this uh, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Texas format, is there a talent that you do? You Do you sing? No, and thank goodness, because I don't have one. I have two left feet, so I can't dance. I cannot sing. I would break a window. Um, I snort when I laugh, so maybe that's a talent. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so, but you, you do interviews, I guess. And yeah. That so we have interview, it's 50%. We have evening gown, which is 25. And then we have swim, which is considered fitness, the additional 25. So how much time do you spend there actually at the competition? And when did you arrive? And I know the crowning was on a Saturday night. Yes. Yeah, so we actually arrived. Um, what was great about this year is we had Oklahoma and Texas together this oh, year. Really? And my best friend is from Oklahoma. So she flew into the Waco airport on Wednesday. I picked her up. We headed down there that night. That way we weren't stressed on Thursday. Down there was uh, Corsicana. Oh, Corsicana. Yep. And mm -hmm. that way we were in a hair and makeup before 4 a.m. So that's mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah. And then that way we start the festivities on Thursday. And then we have have prelims on Friday and then Saturday morning we have interview and then Saturday night is when we have finals. So who did they have judge it? Did you know any, any of the judges or I how had, that worked? So I had competed with one of the judges prior and she is an absolute doll. She is the epitome of style and grace. Um, and then I did not technically know anyone like through Facebook especially through right. social media now I mean you're friends with almost everybody right and you're bound to know somebody and mm -hmm. then the other two uh, were directors for the America system and so I had never met them uh, ironically during my interview one of my first questions was from the director who had seen me previously compete uh, and so my question there was I had seen you compete three years ago what's changed and so <laughs> I was like, oh, well, what did goodness. you say? So I actually said nothing's changed. I will always be the most authentic version of myself, the yeah. tall, quirky, goofy kid in the corner. But if I had to say one thing, it would be that I'm more refined this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the experience year after year has got to have um, meant a lot. Mm -hmm. And and it has to be somewhat expensive. How does all that work? That is true. Um, <laughs> you do get sponsors, which uh -huh. is great. Uh, I was working the pavement, trying to make sure everything was paid for. And if it wasn't, mm -hmm. I, I mean, was, the gowns run what? Oh, they can go anywhere between 500 to $10,000, oh, depending goodness. on a gown and depending on the designer. And they're all gorgeous. It doesn't oh, matter. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. It doesn't matter the price. I mean, you can find an absolutely exquisite gown for, you know, hundreds. And so it's mm -hmm. all in how you present yourself and what you wear. Uh, mine, unfortunately, always have to be made because I am so tall. A that tall, I, yeah, yeah, so I can't really buy anything off the rack, but mm -hmm. it's always fun. Yeah, now the swimsuits, the same swimsuits, did mm -hmm. everybody uniformly? Everyone's in the same one. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, so, so what was that experience like? I think it's great. And especially as a missus, you're able to show one, not only are you a wife, but a mother. And then also to all shapes and sizes are welcome. It mm -hmm. does not matter. I mean, I competed this year at the heaviest that I'd ever been, but I felt the most comfortable in my body, especially in my walk. And I mean, it's just amazing to see everybody get up there and have the confidence that they exude. I think that's absolutely yeah. Did amazing. you have any coaching on, uh, this on year, any of that? Yeah. This year? I did not. I kind of just went. I mean, because modeling and that it. kind of thing, there, there's some work that's involved oh, in, yeah. you know, how you how you move and yep. so forth. And I don't have the typical pageant walk. I normally have a model well, walk okay, because well, I am so tall that those legs just keep on going. Right. You know, you <laughs> see models, you know, walking with their feet in front, you mm -hmm. know, and almost. Is, but it's that's what you see on a runway. So. Yeah. Yep, it's a different walk. It's and a so different walk. I learned so it. I learned walk? it in the past. You know, it's just everything's elevated up. You know, you're more regal in the walk. It's right. not, you know, back forward with your shoulders and your legs are right, leading. Right. Um, but <laughs> I'm not worried about my posture. Yeah, you're right sitting now. there like this. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, um, you know, it, it depends on the person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it, so you can really sort of be yourself. Yes. And I think that's that's what's delightful about the whole Mrs. Mm-hmm. Uh, program, mm-hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Waco. The Mrs. Waco um, competition was, was when? When did you do that? So there is no Mrs. Waco. So okay. what you do is when you sign up, you represent um, oh, the city, city or the county okay. that you're from, and then you're able to go and compete okay. from there. All right. Mrs. Waco used to have a pageant, um, but they haven't had that. And I think at least five years. Yeah. Um, but you will be competing at Mrs. America. Yes, so tell me about that. What do um, you know about that? I know everything. <laughs> I bet you do. So uh, we will be competing in Vegas and oh, we Vegas. will be there from November 11th, check ins the 12th, all the way until the 21st. Oh um, my goodness. Our competition That's a long is on time. the 20th. We'll have interviews and everything else in between then. And there's also um, different, I like to say brackets just because. I'm into sports, um, but we right. have a Miss Division, there's an American Division, there's the America Division. So it's absolutely amazing that all these different oh, women so get to Oh, so Miss America isn't the same. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's so Miss America is different because they're not married and they're, I think, right, 26 right. and below. But there right. is a uh, Miss America Strong, I believe, and that's for women who um, still want to compete that are either um, divorced or widowed or single really? with children, without children. Um, so I think that's absolutely amazing that I all these different what types you're of saying. women can get on stage and do Right, right, right. Thing. Well, just the preparation has got to be part of the fun of it, huh? Oh, yeah, except for when you stare at, like, say, Josh, our manager eating donuts and french fries and i'm like can you please go <laughs> to the break room right now oh yeah, yeah he, he loves it he that. loves it and waves <laughs> it in my face i'm like oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well so since you had the i have the additional competition coming mm-hmm. up it wasn't like oh i've won this so let's go get a cheeseburger well i had that um actually one of all, i had i gave myself three days okay. i gave myself three <laughs> days to eat whatever i wanted to uh-huh. eat um, because we are so close to nationals which is seven weeks away um some people that may not seem very close to me ex- seems extremely close. Um, but I gave myself three days to eat queso, to eat Katie's custard, to eat um, <laughs> all those great, all the amazing foods. things. And yeah. then yesterday I was like, I'm so good. I'm going to go back on track. And then Sean, one of our trainers, he brought in a donut cheeseburger. A what? Yeah, it was. That's a thing? Oh, it yes. It is Only, a at thing. So, uh, only at Halo. Only at Halo will you receive, <laughs> when you win, Mrs. Texas, a Shipley's donut cut in half with oh. a Wendy's double bacon oh, cheeseburger in between. This is a guy making this, by the way. If it yeah. was a female, it would have been homemade, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was amazing. <laughs> so that was funny. my last meal. <laughs> my last cheat meal, let's yeah, say. Yeah, your cheat, your yes. cheat meal. So so what do you do uh, generally, if I can ask, you know, what, what you're general you know diet for a competition um so how draconian is it yeah so number one i don't like to say diet because then you know i don't ever want to trigger myself in doing that so my lifestyle has changed um calories in competition exactly (laughs) competition lifestyle um i would say that it's calories in calories out so i am doing mostly lean meats so fish chicken pork um and then vegetables some nuts cheddar cheese you know Mm -hmm. eating every two hours protein shakes things like that yeah i eat Mm -hmm. a lot and especially because i'm so tall it goes straight down to my toe which i'm very grateful for yeah (laughs) well i i tell you it's just it's fascinating to me and and i'm so proud of you i mean i have to i have to say that and again since i've known jody since he was a kid Mm -hmm. you know and and it's just delightful to see your whole and your extended family too mm-hmm. sherry and joe your yeah. in-laws mm-hmm. known them for for many many years and um i know they're especially proud of you oh yes I as flowers well. sent to the hotel <laughs> and she, every single morning sherry's sending me good morning this is texas, <laughs> this is texas. i'm like are you guys sure they crowned the right person <laughs> <laughs> well so what are your responsibilities i mean i i invited you to come to the mm-hmm. podcast and i was so delighted to see you and your all your regalia oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping for the bat, but you know the the tiara is really spectacular. It's pretty, isn't it? It's very, very. I'm pretty. never taking it off. I haven't <laughs> you, since but Saturday. But you're not going to you're not going to get to keep it though, are you? Yes, you are going to get to keep yes. it. Yes. Okay. I that don't get to give us. this away. I, I don't blame you. <laughs> that is that is your special one. Yes. So so what are your responsibilities? What are do you have special appearances through the 
program mm-hmm. that you'll do? Yep. So um, I am actually in charge of doing podcasts and uh, um, interviews, articles, things like that. Um, my goal is my reign as Mrs. Texas for this year is to do as many appearances as I can. So I have been reaching out to a magnitude of different charities and galas, event coordinators, things like that, um, to get involved in the community, to get involved in the schools, to do things like that. So um, my number one priority is making sure that I'm getting out there, that I'm representing the system well, that I'm representing married women well. Um, and so that's, you know, what I have to offer. Well, when we come back, we're going to uh, get a little bit more involved in hearing what you think about things. And uh, Ashley Beard, again, it's just so much fun to have you here on the podcast Thank as you. Mrs. Texas. We'll be right <laughs> back. April. Hey, I'm Caroline, and this is Bloody Happy Hour, your newest true crime comedy podcast. So grab your favorite drink and join us every week for Thirsty Thursday. We promise to tell you the bloodiest stories and give you a laugh in between. Go find us, follow us, and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Cause guess what? We're about to be sipping on some murder. This is Mandy and the F-Bomb, where we shed light on stories and invite you to find your place and purpose in the world of foster care. Through my involvement with families involved in foster care and being a foster mom myself, I've learned that it's the things that wreck us the most profoundly that can stitch us back together into the best purpose-filled versions of ourselves. Tune in to Mandy and the F-Bomb. It's stories that invite you in to find your place and purpose in the world of foster care. You can find us anywhere you get podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Looking for something a little more approachable and less polished about childbirth? There's a lot of really good podcasts and YouTube channels, books, and articles on this topic. So what's the angle? My name is Micah Burgess, and I've been a birth doula for over 20 years. What's a birth doula? I'm basically a childbirth labor coach, but more on that later. I'm also a mom of six. That's right, six kids. Now, before you ooh and ah because I just flashed the number six, can I just say, you don't even know if I fed them today. I mean, Mike. Mike's my producer. People automatically assume I'm a great mom because I birthed six children. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving on. It's a really good point, honestly. (laughs) And I'd never thought about the fact that you didn't feed them today. That's great. Right. Yeah. I have six kids. That's all you know. That's literally all you know. I'd like to clarify that it's not great if you didn't feed them. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. That's so true. That's so true. So as I was thinking about this trailer for the podcast... I decided to go ahead and listen to some of the examples of other trailers for different podcasts. Unfortunately, I do not have an amazing accent that will hypnotize you so that you don't actually care what comes out of my mouth. Agreed. Right? So this trailer needs to give you a good sense of what this podcast will be like. Okay, so let's talk about the title. Game Day is referring to the actual day the mom is giving birth. I use this term often in my book. Hey, Mike. I wrote a book during quarantine. What's the name of that book? The Humor in Birth, Stories and Insights from a Doula. And we're going to use that as a guide for the podcast, interviewing different people and stories that are in the book. And so I'm excited about that. Now, when you hear game day, you might also be thinking like sports show, but this is not a sports show. It's about birds, not balls. And this is a play on words, so you can make the balls be whatever you want. I'm just saying. So here's what I know about birth. It's amazing, monumental, heart, messy, traumatic, and life-changing. And these are the things you typically hear about. All the different options, the education preparation, maybe what went wrong or the nurse you didn't like. There's also bad experiences, trauma, and yes, loss. These are all things that need to be talked about and shared. What I want to highlight is an aspect of birth rarely talked about. The humor, enjoyment, the giggles amusement, 
candor. I mean, these are unfiltered women, y'all, with some fabulous one-liners. So as my client Sherry is now pushing for hour number two, she says, Howard, you're getting fixed. What about the hilarious things family members do during birth? My sister-in-law is focused and breathing through a very difficult contraction. And my brother, Burrito Breath, is all up in her grill. Is that his God-given name? Yeah, Burrito Breath. That's what we call him. Don't do that. People don't, don't eat in labor and then breathe on your person. Don't do that. What about my embarrassing blunders, Mike? At the end of one of the births I attended, I was congratulating my client. Oh, my goodness, Rebecca, you were so amazing. So proud of you. Congratulations. And she's like, thank you. My name is Cecilia. Ooh. Seriously? Like, I just called you the wrong name a hundred million times during your birth. Okay, I probably shouldn't get paid for that one, y'all. The lighthearted atmosphere can be positive and powerful. When the room is not heavy, it can remind the laboring mom that she's okay, she's normal, birth is normal, and this can strengthen her mentally. That's what I do. I help women during childbirth, help them manage contractions through breathing and different a big bag of tricks that I got, uh, give them mental and emotional support so that they can have a positive birth experience. When we embrace these lighthearted moments, they become special memories And the more we share the memories, the more positive the birth becomes. And that's what we're going to do on this podcast. We're going to share these lighthearted, positive moments and these stories and these amazing people that I get to work with in birth. I'm going to share my own birth stories. We're going to have different people that we're interviewing. And I'm super excited about that. So join me using any of the podcast platforms or roguemedianetwork.com. Subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of Game Day, Birds Not Balls. You can also follow me at my doula Micah and check out my website, wakeodoula.com. That was really good, honestly. Yeah? You did a really good job. Cool. Yeah. The, most people don't do it that well the first time through. And we're back with Ashley Beard, Mrs. Waco, who is now Mrs. Texas, and will be heading to Las Vegas to compete in the Mrs. America competition in November. And it, it's just a delight. I'm so excited when I saw that they had crowned you Thank as you. Mrs. Texas. Um, I, you know, I get the sense from all these competitors watching them since I was a little girl, Miss America, watching them, that that the competitors really become a sisterhood that they you know that they truly seem to love in other rather than like oh yeah it's it's not like that at all now it may be like that in like the toddlers and tiaras but when you get to the married women (laughs) yeah that's true yeah it is not like the mothers oh yes exactly (laughs) yeah but i mean you you, because you have a commonality and experience Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah no other place I feel that I would meet the most incredible women. You know, you sit down and you talk and people are doctors and lawyers and authors and stay-at-home moms, which I feel is the most rewarding job in the world. Um, But you meet like-minded individuals that are there for commonality. You know, they're wanting to better themselves, their community. And I think that that's what this is all about. It's absolutely amazing and inspiring. And like I said, my best friend who competed in Oklahoma, um, I met her at a pageant. Mm -hmm. We discussed food, of course, because once again, I'm a huge foodie, and so is she, and we have gone on family trips together, we've gone on girls trips together, Um, but the camaraderie, especially once you end up winning or losing, you know, everyone just comes together, and, you know, it's just amazing to see the friendships flourish. Well, this is, this is really just a kind of a mountaintop experience i would think oh it's a i still like i said am in shock like i am like oh my god well, because so many years you competed and yeah. so heard your name but a little sooner than you wanted yeah, to hear you know, it you and know? it's a dream that you have yeah. you like you've competed for something and it's viable and it's visible and now that it's yours it's like I want to make sure I'm doing the absolute best that I can with it. And I never want to take anything for granted because so many women compete for this title. I don't want to let them down. I don't want to let my directors down. So, you know, you also kind of have that with your crown. It's like weighing you down, but you get lifted up by so much positivity and support that it's just absolutely amazing. Well, and it's great. It gives you a voice. Mm -hmm. Then, as you say, uh, when you become involved with uh, other nonprofit agencies or projects or events or whatever 
in your official role as Mrs. Texas, you know, you can you can bring that added something special. Exactly. And to, you know, my platform, because we do get to pick pa- uh-huh. platforms if we it? want. Um, it's called Born Perfectly Imperfect. All children are created equal. So even though I played soccer at Baylor, I was a goalie and I was born with a birth defect to my left arm. So my bones and my elbow are actually twisted. Uh, my two middle fingers do not straighten all the way when I bend my wrist. So I actually catch the balls and I love you sign. Um, and it's three inches short around the other side and so um, I was born with a birth defect and it's just a way to let children know that they can accomplish and do anything that they set their mind to. Um, my daughter was born with febrile seizures. My mom had epilepsy and she has nothing surrounding her lower vertebrae so we kind of have a family history of birth defects and it's just a way to get out there and let everybody know that um, like Shriners had done my surgery because we didn't have money growing up. Mm-hmm. And oh, so, they're wonderful. Oh, they're f- they're because phenomenal it costs organization. Nothing to the family. Yes, yeah. and which was which would have been a huge burden to oh, my sure. family. And the fact that I'm able to So what were they able to do surgically? Um, they went in and they elongated the two ligaments in my um forearm and Mm. so that was able to release to where at least when my wrist is not flexed uh, my fingers to go straight which is great because I was able to get my ring on Uh, but whenever (laughs) it does bend um, I still have a little bit of an issue right there but that is okay and that's the way that God created me yeah and and everybody's got something everybody you know Mm -hmm. you see on Facebook these perfect people and all in doing fun wonderful things but but That's you don't Facebook ever and see that. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't ever see the the full story, yeah. and and I think uh, you know a lot of people internalize these issues that they that they have, and and it kind of eats away at them. And so it's important that you're you're making this statement that yeah. everybody is perfect, even if imperfect exactly that's the way the world works and that's the way that they'll continue to go and you know like i said he's woven each one of us completely the way that he was meant for us to be and so i feel that that's the most positive message that i can give and the most positive message that i want to make sure that i leave my legacy as yeah yeah well it's been delightful getting to uh just see jody grow up into the stunning young man that he is he's real cute, uh, family he? man he's very but he's quiet and he's shy and we were mm-hmm. just talking today at the gym about yep. how for him getting on stage in a tuxedo oh, yes. is not really his thing it is not so he would like to be in the corner and not <laughs> say anything and have that proud smile from the audience um but he knows how much this means to me and yeah. so he's willing to do that and i love him even more for that um <laughs> But it's going to be absolutely amazing for him to go on stage with me and be there holding my hand walking there because I know how difficult it is for him. But knowing that this is what I want, um, it just means the world to me. Well, yes. And and we have to know that there's a mister. Yeah, we have to, right? <laughs> <laughs> he can't hide in the corner. I can't <laughs> dance in the corner. We got to come together. Uh, that's um, exactly right. He's my yin to my yang is what I like to say. I'm yeah. the loud, outspoken one. I also joke that's the reason that he has a shaved head uh that he's bald all the time even though he does have hair i promise yeah. um, but he is the quiet most gentle giant you would ever meet mm-hmm. yeah i mean he played football he at did. baylor and yeah he did. just had a, had a wonderful career there uh in d1 sports and of course i get to see him somewhat sometimes at the gym yeah. so it's you it sounds like i'm at the gym all the time she's there all the time I'm y'all really <laughs> we have to kick her out. She yeah, brought her own sleeping bag up yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. But but I do thoroughly enjoy yes. um, my time there and getting to, to be with that and to get to um, see this wonderful progression that you've made and, and chat Michelle. with you. Get a little of the behind the scenes oh, yeah. of what it's like to be uh, in a pageant. Well, but, I don't um, know if I'm the right one to follow because I kind of dance to the beat of my own drum. And that's but, okay. Yep, that's okay. <laughs> in fact, that's, that makes it special. Yes. Well, I like to end these visits with a, a questionnaire it's similar to the one the late great james lipton used on inside the actor's studio so this is kind of I my have take done some research on well you no, 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 no no this is my take interview on these, part two this is yeah that's right you you have to be quick on your toes what is your favorite word amazing clearly if you play this back i probably said it at least 47 <laughs> times <laughs> all right then what what is your least favorite word stupid that's really? a bad word in our family, so we don't like that. It has a very negative connotation. Yeah, in fact, my granddaughters, their parents say it's a bad word, and I referred to something being stu- stupid, and I was immediately corrected. Grand, no, you don't yeah, say that word. That's what grandkids are there for. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
But he was being stupid. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. What turns you on creatively or emotionally or, you know, spiritually? I think anything, being around people. Um, you know, I was at Baylor for interior design and fashion. And so I already have that kind of, you know, side of my brain working a little bit more than probably normal. Um, but being around people, seeing people smile, light up, um, being able to fix and help anybody that needs that. So I think just being present and making sure that I'm the funny one, um, that also helps me be creative as well, because then I get to feed off of other people. Mm -hmm. What turns you off then creatively or spiritually or emotionally? I think negativity. Um, I you know, hear that and, a lot. Every, and everyone would say that, right? Yeah, yeah, I do hear that um, a lot. But I for think sure. that it, it, it drains the energy out of you. Mm -hmm. And some people don't know how to deflect that. I'm good at it because I am so kind of over the top and loud um, that I can kind of like bounce it off of me. Um, but sometimes it, it just gets too much. What sound do you love the most? My kids' laughter. It's amazing. My daughter's laugh is like, <laughs> And then my son just goes, ha, 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 And then because I told you that I snort when I laugh sometimes, <laughs> he now thinks it's appropriate to snort when he laughs, okay. but it's forced. So he'll be like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, oh, Jet, honey, please. People are going to make fun of you. Don't do that. But I love their laugh. <laughs> oh, well, what, what is your least favorite sound then? Oh, anything that repeats itself, but especially nails on a chalkboard. Oh, yeah. Like, Horns that last too long. Mm -hmm. um, Some somebody's alarm going off mm -hmm. on the car. And Sometimes when I hear my own voice there. play back in podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to be great. <laughs> what other profession would you have liked to try? I really thought that I was going to be either a journalist for a fashion magazine mm -hmm. or that I was going to design restaurants and bars for like Disney World and Universal Studios. Really? Um, so I would have gone into either one of those. Hmm. Well, what profession or job do you know you would not want? Hmm. What would I not want? Probably cooking because I'd eat all the food that I made. And I would not be here today. <laughs> or I would have to own a gym and work out constantly. <laughs> constantly, which you kind of do that anyway. Yeah. All right, finally, what do you want to hear God say to you when you arrive at those pearly gates? You did it. You did everything that you set out for. Your legacy is going to be reciprocated. People are going to admire the journey that you were on and that I love you. Mm. Amen. Well, thank you, Ashley thank Beard, you. Mrs. Texas. Congratulations and all the best and can't wait to hear about uh, your Vegas adventure. Thank you. I appreciate it, Anne. <laughs> Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.